Lucian Freud is a British painter and draftsman. He would spend most of his career in Paddington, London, an inner city area whose seediness is reflected in Freud's often somber and moody interiors as well as cityscapes. In the 1940s, he was principally interested in drawing, specifically the face, and that's unusual at the time. We see the development of the abstract movements in the United States at that time, but in Europe, they're going through a little different period, as we saw with Bacon, who's going to be Freud's contemporary early on. Now, he will experiment with surrealism. He was also loosely associated with neo-romanticism, kind of too areas, two movements that, of course, would work well together, capturing the dreams, capturing the subconscious, ideas of the macabre, etc. He would establish his own artistic identity, however, in meticulously executing realist works, tending to imbue them with a pervasive mood of alienation. Oftentimes, he would have a very close relationship with the sitter, and this would often be very important for Lucian. His mother sat for an extensive series in the early 1970s after she's widowed, and his daughters, Bella and Esther, will also model at times nude together and individually. Although the human form dominates his output, Freud also executes other pieces, such as cityscapes, but we're not looking at those today. Instead, we're looking at one of his earlier figures, Girl with the White Dog. And it's an interesting piece. It's an enigmatic piece as we dig into it. Now, this picture shows the artist's first wife when she's pregnant. The style of the painting has roots in the smooth and linear portraiture of the great 19th century French neoclassical painters such as Ingres. But that's where we start slipping from this grand reality of 19th century painting into sort of this super realism or 20th century realism that we get with Freud. And you'll notice that he's not being incredibly realistic. There are elements that are clumsy that stand out as not being as realistic as others. And, and that makes sense. But he's fitting into the general mold using something very, very concrete to get us to something ambiguous, something abstract. Now, this piece, uh, together with his, the part, uh, particular psychological atmosphere of Freud's early work, would lead critics to make his, uh, one critic, Herbert Reed, to make his celebrated remark that Freud was the engray of existentialism. What we're looking at is this idea of why. Why do we exist? Why is it necessary? What is the meaning? And we get that through these various elements, such as the dog. Not looking all that comforting, but almost looking bored in this case. The sense that Freud gives of human existence is essentially one of loneliness. And spirituality, if not physically painful, spiritually, if not physically painful. It is something shared by his great contemporaries, such as Francis Bacon. And in this case, what you get is this impression of a woman who's perhaps going to be a mother. We don't have a lot of signs of that. She's partially topless. This gives us the idea of pregnancy and motherhood. It's a very old symbol of motherhood. But we get this sense of isolation, of fear, of a woman who's unsure of the next step. She's about to have a child, but she's maybe questioning whether that's the right thing to do, or what kind of mother she'll be, or maybe even what kind of father Lucian will be. We're not entirely sure. The dog is there. Typically in art, the dog is going to be a symbol of fidelity, but here it seems to be a symbol of comfort or maybe boredom or isolation. The only person with her is this dog. And he leaves this huge, broad expanse on the left side of the canvas, giving this uh, increasing this idea of isolation as if there's nothing else in her life, nothing else that's important to her. And by doing this in realistic terms, again, just like with Hanson, we're drawn in. 
and we start to put ourselves in the woman's position. Maybe you put yourself in the dog's position. It's a little awkward, but you put yourself in the woman's position. And again, just like abstract expressionism and so many other movements, you start to have your train of thought play into it. And you start to interpret. You interpret her and her expression. Maybe you interpret the exposed breast. Maybe you interpret the emptiness of the room, the sterility of the room. It's got some character, but there's really nothing there. It's empty space. And it should draw thoughts and memories out. It should alter that train of thought that's always running through your mind. And that is the beauty of of Freud, of superrealism, drawing meanings out of you through the use of ubiquitous and somewhat ambiguous imagery.